Hey guys, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just will never not laugh. Hey guys, my name is Jordan. I am 22 years old and I am a young, a young adult who is looking to make videos about spreading the awareness of verbal a apraxia. Now I'm going to be reading off a screen behind me that has my notes so if you see my eyes wander that's why um in today's video we are going to talk about how verbal apraxia affects the person who actually has it and just more information about apraxia in general i got a lot of positive feedback from my last video saying that i really helped people which was really awesome to hear because if i'm able to help one kid know that they're not alone if i'm if i'm able to help one adult know that they're not alone and that somebody has been through what they have been through that's all that matters to me if i'm able to help one person like that just makes me really happy so i'm really excited that i get the chance just to sit back here and just to talk to my phone and tell you guys more about verbal apraxia before we get into the contact just just make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't clicked that little subscribe button down below i encourage you to so you're able to get more videos about how my life is and how i live how I live my life having verbal apraxia. So I'm going to go through a list that I got from a Tumblr user that goes by the name under Courage to Be. I just want to make sure that I give this person credit where credit is is due because this is where I found my notes. So let's get started. Um, for the first one, verbal apraxia doesn't mean that there is nothing wrong with the actual muscles or nerves around your mouth. It doesn't mean that they are affected. This just means that your brain has trouble sending your mouth signals for accurate movements of speech. Verbal apraxia is known as inconsistent speech errors. The ability to pronounce something one day or moment and unable to repeat it the next. Now I feel this 110% completely because there, because there are some days that I can say things really well and I can say something so fluent and I was so proud of, of myself but the next hour, the next day, I may be unable to say that word. So this, so this just really takes note about how verbal apraxia is so unpredictable. People with verbal apraxia may have troubles with their speech volume, with their speech volume, which just means that they may speak very, very loud or they may be very soft or just unable to control their volume or be unable to modulate their rate of speech or create a change in tone in inflection. Now, I have trouble with my speech volume as well. I tend to speak very quietly I tend to speak very, very softly. And I have found that there is this app called Noise Level that really helps me just really talk more loud and to be aware of how loud I'm talking. People with verbal apraxia often just feel that the act of talking takes an incredible amount of concentration and energy and the overwhelming feeling of i just can't do it no matter how hard they want to people with verbal apraxia 
may frequently respawn in short phrases or without reciprocation. And this just means that they may not ask a follow-up question. Or they may answer something by saying, I don't know, due to trouble formulating more complex speech, even if more complex answers and exchanges exist in their head. Now, I've had the tendency to do this. Now, I will often say that I forgot what I want to say, hold on, but I actually didn't forget what I wanted to say. My brain just had trouble sending my mouth the signal to say that word. People with verbal apraxia may often be mistaken for shy, avoidant, rude, disinterested, or unintelligent, depending on the situation. But this doesn't mean that they are any of those things. But those misconceptions can be in the back burner of people's minds. It is often much easier to generate speech when reading something aloud than to spontaneously come up with speech without a visual guide. And for myself, I'll often do very good when I'm reading off of something. I'm actually reading off of something right now. I'm actually reading off the screen in behind me. And when I do this, I do notice that I do have less trouble. So people with verbal apraxia often experience both physical, which means around your mouth, and mental exhaustion from speaking. The reality of having a physical difficulty with speaking can lead to feelings of in of insecurity. It can lead like they are easy to misunderstand and it can actually lead to possible selective mutism. So it is really important that kids and adults who do have verbal apraxia are able to express how having the disorder makes them feel because they because there is in fact nothing wrong with them they just have a difference so thank you guys so much for watching this and taking the time I think it's so awesome when anybody takes the time to educate their selves about this topic. If you guys would want to see any more videos about my life with apraxia, leave a comment down below. And if you have any questions, please let me know and maybe I can do a, another Q&A about my life living with verbal apraxia as an adult. Well, I'll talk to you guys soon, okay? Bye.